bless you richly in Jesus' name. Welcome to the Daily Charge with Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional. Get a copy and get for somebody. Welcome. God bless you richly in Jesus' name. It's time to pray. Can we close our eyes for prayers? Father, we thank you because you are such a great God. Thank you for blessing us all the time. We are gathered at your feet. Father, open our understanding. Teach us, O Lord, by your power. At the end, Father, let only your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And a louder amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. You're welcome in Jesus' name. Three loud amen. 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 And amen in Jesus' name. God bless you richly. Welcome to another edition of the Daily Charge. Today we are looking at the lesson from the life of Miriam, the second part of it. Lesson from the life of Miriam, part 2. And it will take us to the memory verse, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 12, from verse 12. We say, Wherefore, wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble and the feeble knees you lift them up the hands that are down the feeble knees encourage them to stand right god is expecting us to raise people who are less privileged those who are not standing firm to be a help and a blessing to them and to their destiny in jesus name motivational codes for today Motivational cause for today. He said, rescue the perishing. Rescue the perishing and care for the dying. Rescue the perishing and care for the dying. Because you never can tell how much of a generation you are saving through just one person. You cannot tell how many, how many generations you are saving by saving just one one person that is why this scripture is telling us be kind to people be kind to people that comes across you or you come across be kind to them when you are kind to just one person you may not know that you are saving a generation that person has a lot of people that are looking up unto him a lot of people a lot of family members they want that person to prosper so that they too can prosper the fall of that person will mean the fall of the whole, the entire family, even a lineage, a lineage. So that is why if you are going to be wicked or you are going to do bad to people, always think of the aftermath. Don't look at that person singularly. You should look at the aftermath holistically. What do you think you are doing? Because a lot of people, people are attached to them in their families. People are attached to them in their communities. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. There's a prayer for today. A prophetic word for today. Jesus shall implant his love in your heart. In the name of Jesus. God shall implant his love in your heart. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's look at the fire scripture for today. Exodus chapter 2 from verse 4 to 8. Exodus chapter 2, from verse 4 to 8. And his sister stood afar off to wit what will be done to him. Was standing afar off to look at what will happen to her brother. And the daughter of Pharaoh now came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens all of them walk along with her. They walk along by the river, by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, flags, that is Pharaoh's daughter, she saw the ark among the flags. She sent a, a maid to go and fetch it for her. Go and bring that ark for me. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. The boy was crying. And because the boy was crying, 
she had compassion upon that child. She had compassion on him. God will have compassion on you. The helpers of your destiny will have compassion on you. When there is compassion, then your problem is solved. If God can put your case in the heart of somebody, then your problem is solved. That person will be the one that will shoulder the problem. And look at what the Bible says. And said, This is one of the Hebrews' daughter. She knew very well that this is one of the Hebrews' daughter. Then said his sisters to Pharaoh, to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee somebody, a nurse of the Hebrew woman, that she may at least take care of the child, nurse the child for her? So, and Pharaoh's daughter now said to her, Go, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter did not know that the person that was going to be called is going to be the mother. And Pharaoh's daughter now said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for who? For me. When somebody has compassion on you, you become his property. You become somebody dear to his heart. It doesn't matter where the person comes from. Just pray that God, the person that will have compassion on me, Holy Spirit, send them to me. By the time they are sent to you, they care less about where you came from. They care less of the kind of parents that came, that gave back to you. They care less of your indigenous, whatever you are. They care less of who you are. They now adopt you and now they take you to themselves. That's what happened in this place. Pharaoh's daughter took Moses to herself. He said, go and nurse her for who? For me. And not only that, he said, I will now give you the wages. And the woman now took the child and she started nursing her own son. And she was collecting salary for that. What a wonderful compassion. She was collecting money for taking care of her own child. That's what the mercy of God can do for somebody. It breaks all protocols. And it goes a long way to bring joy into the heart of whoever that God has had compassion upon. I pray, if you can say a better element, the Lord will have compassion upon you. In the name of Jesus, God shall be merciful unto you. God shall be merciful unto your family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Look at uh, Miriam. Who is Miriam here? Miriam was a loving and a compassionate sibling. Loving and compassionate sibling. She was there to ensure that Pharaoh's daughter called for the mother of her brother so that they can take good care of the boy. So she still loved her family and she did something to that family to ensure that somebody is brought out of problem. So Miriam was a loving and compassionate sibling. She stood up for a weak and helpless brother. That time the brother was weak, the brother was helpless. She didn't display the nonchalant attitude that most Christians used to display now. Nonchalant attitude. I don't know him. I don't know where he came from. I care less about him. Nonchalant attitude. What is happening to your brother, to your friend, and to somebody close to you does not concern you. As long as it's not you, you believe anything can happen to anybody. You care less. That most Christians used to have this thing. They display nonchalant attitude in our days. The Bible says, she strengthened the feeble knees. The boy was weak, but the strength came from Miriam, who happens to be her sister. She became a race to her. It became a wonder to her. She became a voice to her. And uh, even though the boy was helpless, he was broken-hearted, but in the presence of this woman 
brought joy but life into the life of her brother. She forbid so many evil that can come to him and she decided to stand by and God was glorified in the life of Miriam. She, she insisted that the will of God be done in the life of Moses and that was what happened at the end of the day. Beloved, I want to ask you now today, are you a loving sibling to the rest of the family like Miriam? When I say sibling to the rest of the family, I'm not even talking of the people who are from your blood, from your bloodline. I'm not talking of the people who are your immediate family. I'm also talking of the people who are also people coming together to you, apart from being biological people, those who are also spiritual brothers, spiritual sisters. Are you so loving that they can boast that you have been a help and you have been there for them at a particular time are you so loving to those your siblings whether spiritual whether they are physical so that people can say you have been a wonder to their life we are going to come back very shortly we go on a very short break by the time we come back we continue this very interesting teaching god bless you Stop them before they stop you with this seven step agenda. Destroy every satanic image carved in your name. Decree that Pa was wishing you dead will carry your evil loads. Nullify satanic prophecy against your destiny. Nullify by fire every evil dark prayers against your prayers. Acquire the fighting spirit that will secure your dominion. Crush every opposition against your possession. Quench them before they quench you. It's the March Special Mana Water Trio. 13th, 20th, and 27th of March, 2024. Dr. D.K. Olukoya, the General Overseer, Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, will be ministering live from the International Headquarters, Lagos, Nigeria. The March Special Man of Water Trio. Stop them before they stop you. Before they stop you. Come tear down every cauldron in your line of pursuit and acquire the armor to break through. 13th, 20th, and 27th of March, 2024. Come with sand from your environment each day of this meeting for 30 p.m. Jesus is Lord. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries. Surely the Lord is here. Welcome back. We are still on the lesson from the life of Miriam, the second part of it. We, we have read how Fear, uh, Moses was kept in a basket and he was put by the river. The mother was laying ambush somewhere, waiting to see what would happen to him. Thank God the daughter of Pharaoh was coming to take a bath together with the maidens and they now saw this boy. She called for him and then she now requested somebody, a nurse, that would take care of Moses, who happens to be the mother of Moses through the help of this woman called Miriam. Beloved, I want to ask you, have you ever become a voice of rescue to anyone in your life have you ever become a voice of rescue to anyone have you said something or you contributed one way or the other to see somebody coming out of problem or coming out of issues and uh, who in this life can you boast that god has used you to stand for who in this life that you can boast that God has used you? If not, well, thank God, there's nobody who has all the power. But if not that God has used me, this person will not have gotten this, will not have gotten that. Can you boast of anybody like that? You see, when a brother or a sister is in a mess or they are in trouble, what do you do about 
their life? What do you do about it? Are you not just jesting or you are singing unnecessary evil songs? Is it not that you go about mocking and touting them because they find themselves in a difficult situation? That's the question we are going to ask ourselves now. Has God ever used you for anyone? Or have you been have you made yourself available for God to use you to rescue anybody from problem or from difficulty? Can somebody boast and say, God, I thank God for God and I thank God for this person that you use for me in the time of my need. Most of the time when people are in need, you look at them, you make jest of them, you laugh at them. You can look as if they are, you are concerned about them in the physical, but by the time they leave you, you are already laughing at them. Say, so look at your brother, look at your sister. Thank God he find himself in that kind of trouble. Then he will learn, he will know how to do, he will know how to behave and all those kind of things. Is that not the kind of person you are? Even you can call your prayer meeting to rescue the person. Most of the prayer meeting, many of us call in order to help or assist our brethren is always converted to what they call a, a gossip meeting. A gossip meeting instead of prayer meeting. You just gather people to gossip about the person. You can pray some fake prayers as if you love the person. But at the end of the day, what you are doing, you are gossiping about the person. Is that not who you are? Beloved, these days, we are quick to rubbish ourselves. Anytime we have issues, people always jump to conclusion. Hey, I've been telling him. I've been saying it. I know that. I knew this is how it's going to end. In fact, I didn't want to say it, but I knew it. That when it started, I knew that is how it's going to end. You are only waiting for something to end badly. Then you begin to you begin to affirm that yes, you knew it. You did this. You did that. What were you doing? What did you do when you saw that there's going to be a problem? Why? What, what, what did you do to help that person? Nothing. You are waiting for something to become bad. Then you now begin to rebook the person. That is not a good Christian. That is what many of us, that's what we do today. A lot of people, they are quick to rub issue. Anytime you have issues, some of them even go to social media to go and tell good things, bad things about you. They go to the social media and speak to the whole world, telling them what you have done, telling them to be careful of you, telling them this, telling them that, saying terrible things about you. And you know that what you are doing, in most cases, is not the right thing. And a lot of people who are watching us, the people you are trying to downgrade, the people you are trying to, to destroy, a lot of people who are watching us, many of them are unbelievers. Now you can see the way many of us are washing our dirty linen. We are washing it in the public. We are washing it in the face of the unbelievers so that they can continue to mock and continue to say terrible things about, about our God. Many of them are mocking us. Many of them are making unnecessary jests about us. Many of them are saying terrible things about our God. Look at them. They call themselves prayer warriors. Look at them, they call themselves Christian. They call them dead this, they call them dead that. Many things you are making people to say about you. Beloved, many of us, we have quicker way of judging people anytime they run into problem. This is our nonchalant attitude that make many of us to look down on people who needed help is becoming a terrible and a serious situation. But look at Miriam. God used her to bring blessing to the life of the family. The Bible says what well, Miriam was a loving and compassionate sibling. She stood up for her for a weak and helpless brother. She didn't display the nonchalant attitude that many Christians used to display in their days. She was there to help her. She was there to see her through. What a wonderful person that we all need to emulate. Check your life, beloved. What are you doing 
to help others. These days, we are quick to rubbish people. We are quick to pull people down. We are quick to do something terrible about people. And sometimes we go to social media and we are forgetting that the unbelievers are the major people who are watching and watching to bring down your brother who is in faith. Beloved, in the early churches, these things were not like that. Believer, believers, they come together, they bear their burden, they, whatever happens to one person is happening to every one of them. Whatever problem anyone has, all of them has the same problem. Look at it in the book of Acts chapter 2. When you read it from verse 44 to verse 45. Acts chapter 2 from verse 44 to 45. All of them in that time, they covered their fellow nakedness. They did not put you naked before the public. Let's look at it. And all that believes they were together, they had all things. All the believers, they were together, they had all things in common. And verse 45 says, And sold their possessions and their goods, and then they parted them to all men. So every man, as many that has need, they all receive something from their brethren. Do we take care of our brethren today? Look at it again in Acts chapter 4. We'll read it from verse 35. Acts chapter 4 from verse 35. And lay them down to their apostles' feet. And not only that, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. According as they needed it. Distribution was made unto every man. People, they will donate whatever they have. They give what they have to remove tears from the face of others. You are wearing more than 200 shirts, even a lot of shirts, a lot of suits, a lot of dresses, and you see a brother who is wearing just one cloth all the time. You never deem it fit to say you want to help that kind of person. What kind of Christian are you? You are eating in plenty while many of your brethren are in hunger. What kind of Christian are you? Is that what Christianity taught us? That is not what we are taught. We need to be our brother's keeper. We need to be somebody who takes care of the people who are around about us. And I was told, like I told you, you see in those days, uh, it is hard to see Christians committing suicide. But now, Christians can die, they can kill themselves because there's nobody to help them. So people are in serious trouble. We are going to come back after a short break to round up this wonderful teaching. God bless you as you stay tuned. We'll be right back. Bye for now. Through your handheld gadgets, you can now have access to your daily devotional. The Mountain Top Live for the year 2024, Volume 9. Available through download on the Google Play Store and the iOS App Store. Download yours today. Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional, Volume 9. A life changing encounter with a God that answered by fire. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries. Surely the Lord is here. The Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional for 2024 is now available. Volume 9. Get a copy today and some for those you care about and leave your days filled with the presence of the Lord. The Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional, Volume 9. Life changing encounter with a God that answered by fire. Get a copy, visit www.mfmebooks.com or any MFM bookshop near you. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries. Surely the Lord is here. You welcome back. We are still on the lesson from the life of Miriam, the second part of it. I've told you what Miriam has done. Thank God for her contribution to see her brother through, to get a nurse 
who happens to be the mother of Moses. We thank God for her contribution. I've been looking at how do we see ourselves today? Is there anyone who can boast that you have been a help? Or God has used you to be a helper to somebody? Beloved, I was telling you before we went on break. In those days, it was hard to see Christians committing suicide. Because no matter be your need, people are there to run, rally around about you. They are there to provide for all your needs. But these days, hey, even some pastors, they don't even care for you. Not to talk of people who are not pastors. And that is why it has became, become a serious matter for Christians to survive in this environment. It has become a serious matter for Christians to survive. We are not encouraging ourselves. We are not taking other people's burden upon us. We are not caring. We are not looking at other people's problems. Especially when they have reached their wit's end. Nobody is coming to their help. Instead of coming to their help, we make mockery of them. No one was available to share and hear their burden again in our present day. These days, no one is standing up for anybody. Everybody is standing up for, for themselves. Nobody is standing up for anybody. Against every problem, nobody is standing up for anybody. Everyone is now more or less on their own. On their own. Beloved, the reason why we are looking at this teaching is for you to have a change of heart. It's for you to have a rethinking and to have a change of thoughts so that you can be your brother's keepers. Let's love ourselves. Let's love ourselves. If we have find ourselves in this fold, let's be our brother's keeper. No matter be the hard desire of anyone, as long as you can see somebody to rely on, that problem is gone. Even God, God is going to help everyone. Sometimes, it's not going to be like manna dropping from heaven. It's, like to be, it's likely to be someone that is being used for you. One person can cause you to laugh. One person God raised can remove sorrow and tears completely from your life. One person that is raised by God who is willing to come to your help can make you and take you to the next level in life and make you to forget long time of crying and sorrow. And you know the day you receive the blessing of God and you have a change of situation, you seem to even forget how many years you have been in that hard situation. Let us see how we can bring joy into the heart of our fellow brethren. As we do that, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And then we need to be careful so that we be our brother's keeper. In the last two weeks, in the last two weeks, we have uh, many people who have uh, uh, who have come across you one way or the other. What has been your response to them? The people who are closer to you, when last have you checked on them? Even in the last two weeks, how many people have you called? Have you spoken to? Today, I want to encourage you. At least make a call across to somebody. Ask for somebody's welfare. Ask for somebody's way of life. You might, by so doing, be lifting a body out of so many people who are already body. I pray what you have learned from Miriam will go a long way to change our life and change our love to our beloved, to, our, to, to other believers. God bless you richly in Jesus' name. Until we come your way next time, I pray the hand of God shall be upon you. The Lord will continue to keep you standing by His grace. And God will grant you the love so that you can have love for other people around you. As God Himself will continue to love you. 
God bless you richly in Jesus' name. Until we come your way again, remain in the firm grips of the Lord. Jesus is Lord. Bye for now. God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for the miracle of sleeping and waking up. I decree that today it shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. The Lord God that dwelleth in Zion will move you forward in a new way in the mighty name of Jesus. No evil shall befall you this day, neither shall any plague move near your camp. Wherever you go, the favor of the Almighty shall be upon you. Your life shall be plugged into the socket of divine favor, divine restoration, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All the evil present in this day, I bind them and I cast them out. You shall not be part of the evil that is spreading around in the name of Jesus. The Lord will make you head and never detail in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I soak the whole of this day in the blood of Jesus. I soak the whole of this day in the blood of Jesus. You are going in your coming out shall be blessings. The hand of God shall be mighty upon you. I cover you and your family with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Have a wonderful day, beloved. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen.